All right, well, we're back, and uh, it's, again, like, not a worse week than the week prior, but we're recording on Monday, and there's this uh, giant thing involving Another gasoline. Another fucking Monday! Hmm? I said it's another fucking Monday. I know, right? We got the Mondays over here. <laughs> so yeah, right. something happened with some uh, some gas and some ransomware, and a bunch of idiots are saying it's Russia when it's just some hacking group. It, it, so that's the thing. It, it could like it it could be Russia, but it it probably, probably won't be. No, it's probably not because they're always wrong about everything, basically. But um, I mean, of so always being wrong. Uh, you were talking about a, a new paper that's come out. Oh, out a, yeah, a lovely paper. Out of a, uh, an institute of repute, you might say. A, a well-known house of learning. And well, that's the thing, college. is, generally speaking, yes. It's, generally speaking, an excellent institution. Unfortunately, but... the abstract for this paper includes the word ethnographic, so you can already kind of understand where it's going to come from. Uh, and that that place would be bullshit. Uh, so this is a, a paper by five uh, authors at MIT on the viral visual uh, viral visualizations how coronavirus skeptics use orthodox data practices to promote unorthodox science online. If you want to know what the fuck the ivory towers were, when talking about the ivory towers of academia, this goddamn paper is it. Um, I mean, we can just go through. The, you don't even need to read the rest of the paper. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's fascinating, but well, I'll uh, link for everybody in case they want to get a. Um, um, you may as well drama, like just as you know, after, just just imagine someone presenting this to you with a straight face on, and then you laughing very hard at them uh, the entire time they're speaking, and that'll you know hope, hopefully it'll bring your blood pressure down a little bit. What's pissing me off so much is that this is coming out of MIT. A place that is supposed to know better, but it also sounds like it's like it doesn't have, haven't had their departments listed, and I'm not going to bother looking up the authors' departments right now. Um, but they should know better uh, than to say extremely stupid shit that they say in this paper. So uh, I'm I'm just reading the abstract and the conclusions. I'm I'm not going to even uh, bother at this point with the rest of it. Um, you know, I'm sure is extremely fascinating, but the attitudes reflected by the authors in the abstract and conclusions is unconscionable to me. Um, so they went and they analyzed Facebook and Twitter uh, posts, uh, look, you know, looking at the data visualizations that are being passed around by people, um, oh, trying to get a sense of. Fruit. I see. They, uh, well, they try, trying to get a sense. Sources. Well, they're trying to get a sense of of what information is being passed around by whom of about things like masks and so on. So, you know, uh, they they have they have a very clear bias in the way they write this paper. It's just that they're you know it's not like they're not necessarily looking down their nose at people, but they very clearly have a bias. And that's okay to have a bias if you acknowledge that you have a bias. That's one of the reasons why in papers where you have a funding source that has any kind of conflict with what you're doing, you list your funding source because then you know the bias. So, and then data is data. So um, a lot of this paper, like if they have, if they have very fancy graphics in it, um, but realistically here, it, kind of irrelevant to me. Um, so I'll skip down to the conclusions. So it's it's listed as implications and conclusion, uh, section six in the paper, on uh, uh, where's the number? They don't have page numbers. That's, oh, well, that's fantastic. Confusing. Why the f always number your pages? God damn. Well, anyway, you weren't reading in your head the number of the page as you go down. Oh, well, it's page fifteen in the PDF. How about that? Oh, fair enough. All right. So um, the implications of the conclusion. See, I'm, I'm trying to figure out like, if, like, maybe you should just read it, or like I should just read the the text, or or I should just yell about it because it's fucking awful. 
Uh, let me, uh, there's one sentence that I, I can kind of crystallize what the problem is here, and then there's one par- there's a couple paragraphs that are just god awful. Um, but the one sentence here is they espouse a vision of science that is radically egalitarian and individualist. I guess they're talking about the uh, COVID. They're talking pandemic. about skeptical people. And, uh, okay, so yeah, let, me, let me just I can just read a moment before we got on the air, and I was thinking to myself when you said that, it's like, isn't that kind of like what science is supposed to be? Okay, I can actually read two paragraphs straight, and there's going to be a little bit inside there that's kind of out of context based on the rest of the paper, but I think it kind of it captures a lot of the attitude that's involved here, that is frustrating. So if the paper, you know, I'll quote here. Um, so the, the second paragraph in this section and third paragraph in this section are what I'll go through. Second paragraph begins, while academic science is traditionally a system for producing knowledge within a laboratory, validating it through peer review and sharing results within subsidiary communities, anti-maskers reject this hierarchical social model. They espouse a vision of science that is radically egalitarian and individualist. This study forces us to see that coronavirus skeptics champion science as a personal practice that prizes rationality and autonomy. For them, it is not a body of knowledge certified by an institution of experts. Calls for data of scientific calls for data or scientific literacy therefore risk recapitulating narratives that anti-mask views are the product of individual ignorance rather than coordinated information campaigns that rely heavily on networked participation. Oh, recognizing the word here too. Recognizing the systemic, which oh. is italicized, systemic is italicized. So recognizing the systemic dynamics that contribute to this epistemological rift is the first step towards grappling with this phenomenon. And the findings presented in this paper corroborate similar studies about the impact of fake news on American evangelical voters and about the limitations of fact-checking climate change denialism. That's the end of paragraph one, or paragraph two. Now, just out of curiosity, was this um, was this paper fact-checked by Snopes? So this is an archive paper, uh, which means it is uh, not necessarily, well, so in this case, I think it's not peer-reviewed yet. But I um, imagine Snopes It's, it's an e-print. Review? Um, uh, probably not. And, and actually, have they gotten out of the bathtub uh, yet? <clears throat> In their closet. That's a good question. Yeah, have they have they gotten that server out of the bathtub yet, or is it still going to be just the two of them on their laptops hanging out back there? Well, I don't know. I think they've been doing uh, doing a little bit of hanging with uh, the Lincoln Anvil Project guys too. So who knows? <laughs> I just call them the Pedo Product Project. Uh, the <laughs> Lincoln Anvil Project is so much better. All right. Oh, you know. Uh, well, you know, Twitter, Twitter 280 that. characters, so mm-hmm. they go for brevity. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right, so the third paragraph. Calls for media literacy, especially as an ethics smokescreen, to avoid talking about larger structural problems like white supremacy. Ethics smokescreen. Are, I, I've just are, had to pause there for a second. <laughs> ethics smokescreen. Please, continue. I, I just needed a moment to process yeah, I'll, I'll just to just to let that hammer home. Like, there's, you're gonna need to hear the whole thing four or five times by the time we get finished to the end of it. But let me just start from the beginning of it again, so you can process what was being said. Oh, joy! Calls for media literacy, especially as an ethics smokescreen to avoid talking about larger structural problems like white supremacy, are problematic when these approaches are deficit focused and trained primarily on individual responsibility. Powerful research and media organizations paid for by the tobacco or fossil industries have historically capitalized on this skeptical impulse that the science simply isn't settled, prompting people to simply think for themselves to horrifying ends. The attempted coup on January 6th, 2021, has similarly illustrated that well-calibrated, well-funded systems of coordinated disinformation can be particularly dangerous when they are designed to appeal to skeptical people while individual insurrectionists are no doubt to blame for their own acts of violence the coup 
relied on an, a collective effort fanned by people questioning, interacting, and sharing their these ideas with other people. These skeptical narratives are powerful because they resonate with these people's lived experience and crucially because they are posted by influential accounts across influential platforms. Oh, like Parler. You don't even have to say, you don't even have to read any of this for you to go ahead and, and begin calling this bullshit. By the way, happy yeah, birthday. It, it, Old belated the birthday. Implications and conclusion is enough. Alone listen, to listen, it. let's be, let's be entirely honest. I'm still if citing see, references in this. If, point. You, you don't, you don't need to, you don't need to read. You just, just do a keyword search. Yeah, I know. Right? I know if it's, like if it's got the word that. ethnography in it, it just goes in the trash bin. Well, here's it's the very simple. It's a very, very simple method of sorting. Here, here's the other thing. Here's the thing to point out here is in the implications and conclusions, the place where you're supposed to be concluding things, concluding as in you've done the work already, you've presented all that you needed to present. In the no, implications no, no, no. and conclusions section, they're still citing fucking sources. Why? Because they're still making an argument from the very beginning, from before they even did any of the work that they supposedly did. I mean, it's it, the bottom line is so, so we've had better better conversations on this channel about the the difference between the two, and realistically, like I would be in the skeptic side and you'd be in the the, the mask side, but realistically, you probably wouldn't even ally yourself with those people because nine uh, times no. out of ten, the people sitting there and arguing for masks are idiots who are talking about cloth masks and having absolutely no training or discipline in these their are the, usage. These are the people who shout believe just believe the science. Yeah. You, you know, I think I think the best hey, which thing is the, here, which is anti-science to say that, by the way, you should be let, asking questions. Let's let's be very clear here, because I think one of the what was it? There was something about like how how there's two different worldviews of science. This just reminds me of that South Park episode where Randy gets like frozen in time or whatever. And he's uh, like, that's it's, it's not, it's, not not Randy it, Cartman. Oh, is it Cartman? Yeah, well, Cartman whatever. With the, the console, right? <laughs> console yeah. Wars. Yeah. <laughs> the bottom line is that he goes into the future and it's like five different nations and a bunch of fucking otters <laughs> arguing over who has the best science. And this is this is no, not it wasn't how even science that. It was whose name was better. That was, yes, that was yeah, but but it thing. was the the name was based on the science. Right, it was based on science. Right, right. So so the, the principle is the same, is that you basically you you have two different things when it comes to science and people are starting to cite say, hey, it's for the science or don't you believe in the well, science. You know I had I had some guy turn around and he came to me with the friggin' vaccines and he he looks to me and another girl who's an engineer, both of us are, uh-huh. are in the like we're gonna be skeptical of the vaccine because we haven't seen what we want to see in terms of data. And he goes sure. Don't you believe the science? Don't you trust the science? And I'm like, first no. off, if you have to believe the science, you haven't done any science. Yeah, and if I have to trust, trust the science, science, I don't have to do any science. Like you are, you're, you're literally outside of your depth. This was it's this, by the way, this point. is a it's professional. A this is a professional engineer who approached me like this, and I was oh. like, holy shit, what I, the I fuck? I was he was a C student, engineer. wasn't he? No, he's he is uh so so he's a really nice guy, right? So I, I'm not I'm not I'm gonna certain. in any way, the, like he is he's, nice he's he's also like I I have a couple handful of project teams that I put together and I like you know trying to radically alter the way the government inefficiently operates, and he's on he's on one of my teams. Sorry. Like he's one of the no, few people funny. who actually shows up and does his stuff and tries to learn and tries to apply the new technology instead of just throwing, you know, the book at it and saying, aha, we're going to put everything in a glove bag. So, oh, so, so like, I, I have questions except for that one instance. He, when oh, he, he is. I, I tell you, this man asks nothing but questions every single time there is a presentation. Uh-huh. So he's, he is, he's a proto heretic then. You should go ahead and convert him to the dark side. I, I would, I would, but he, uh, he believes in solar energy. Like there was one day in, in like June of last year when he came in and he's like, it, it was, it was like the hottest day of the summer or July oh. maybe. And he comes in, he goes, I bet you they're not having any problems with the solar energy today. And I'm just like, I, I just like what happens at night? What happens at night? No, no, no. Here, here's a better one. What happens to hot wires? Oh, yes. When they stretch out, get thin, narrow, and the resistance goes up. Yep. Faster oh than God. the resistance goes down from the increased temperature. So, and then they so, flash, zap, and split. 
the the bottom line is I don't want to like insult the guy, but the the point is that this is this is stupid shit that we see all the time, well, where people are like, oh, don't you believe the science? It has nothing to do with that. You either present a convincing argument, or you don't. And if you have people who are questioning your argument, you should engage them with the assumption that they have a reasonable perspective on why you well, might it's be called, wrong. It's called having a credulous argument or yes. having a credulous discourse. If someone comes to you with an incredulous uh, argument, you know, like uh, they immediately begin with uh, with begging the question. So say someone walks up to you and says, why don't you stop beating your wife? Um, that's, that's an incredulous thing to say. Unless, you know, you're O.J. Simpson. Well, I mean, we all know when he stopped beating his wife, though. So, I mean, it's kind of a moot. Yeah, right there. it's really was no point in beating a dead horse. So, exactly. <clears throat> woman point being here, on. like, if you show up and you, 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 like, um, Bill Nye versus Ken Ham. Yep. That's a, that's a fantastic example of incredulous argumentation because Ken Ham is an incredulous speaker. Pretty much. He knows he's full of shit. Well, I mean, well, I guess that's well, true. I, right. however, so, came to him without ex allowing him, without the the expectation that Ken Ham was having a a rational cogitation in the entire argument, the entire the entire discussion they had on stage. So well, it, he was not giving him the benefit of the doubt that's required to begin exploring details and changing minds if, if need be. I, I think uh, I think a perfect example actually is Alex Jones. Like, Alex Jones comes in, and he actually has a basis to the stupid shit that he says. So he also comes he in. Does, he's a showman, and he does a very good job being a showman. He is he is an excellent showman. He will turn a five-minute five talking point into several weeks of content. He he, he is very – and, and you know – I mean, at least it's entertaining. That, that – Alex Jones has more facts on his side than CNN. Okay, does. okay, so true. <laughs> the gay frogs thing, which yes. was true. It was true. It's, so still so being, it's still being discussed to this goddamn day. It is still making content to this day. And it, it was deserves a, to. It was you a know, five I, minute curiosity at best. And and the funny part is that that like the left takes these things where they they take these people and then they present it to you with no context as to what the hell he's talking about and say hey see this guy's crazy because he said hey they're turning the frogs gay yeah okay but, but then he's he, sitting there he shouting, they're minute. turning the fucking frogs gay like, oh yeah okay. and he's you know he's he's bent over the desk and he's got the like the jowls are out to the side and the mouth is as right. wide as the so goddamn this is why frog. this is why it's like you're not gonna take that seriously why the fuck would you. Yep, yep. But the same way when someone's sitting there, like Greta fucking Thunberg, shouting, "You're killing us all." Who's gonna uh, take you seriously? Like, if you're not that. sitting there huffing a tailpipe, are you? It, well, it'd be more like that if it weren't for the fact that he just keeps being right for some fucking reason. Yeah, and she just keeps trying to destabilize nation states. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's pretty accurate uh, description. You know, and she only got a couple people arrested in India for being in text messaging and chats with her. I, I oh, just, and for actively trying to subvert the fucking country. It, it, it's very strange to me because because and this is this is why I converted away from being progressive. I understand and I accept some of the basis to the arguments that the left makes, but sure. then they don't think the problem through. And so you get situations like this where – like we, we have right now today where we're dealing with a massive amount of unemployment, almost no job growth in the nation, and 7 million openings, which by the way, like the, the job numbers that came out on Friday is the same kind of numbers we were getting in 2010 when you know that was after a major recession from a bubble pop yeah how funny like, we also had a democrat like, fucking it up then too yeah so so well i mean this is trump did it too so we can't like blame it entirely on biden i can we can say okay, that no, I should I mean, sit there and look at this and go no no, no. We can, if we this can was a bad the, idea we can blame the uh the the short the shortfall by by a factor of 4 we can blame that on biden i mean not 
we don't no. actually know who's making the decisions. So no, if, if we're gonna start, if we're gonna Biden start giving, is. if we're gonna start giving presidents any kind of any kind of credit or or discredit for doing things like jobs. And by the way, my position on that has always been that's completely unconnected. Oh, but, like, I, if we're I disagree. Start doing that, if we're gonna start sure. doing that. I'm pretty sure had we vetoed the enhanced unemployment benefits, the president would have had a very significant impact on jobs. We're going to start giving them credit for this kind of shit. Biden is just as culpable for that 75% shortfall as Trump is for the largest downturn in jobs and increase in jobs in, in history of this country. Yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're and I know that's that's well, an example, by the way, of it. Entirely true. I mean, the jobs are there. It's just, well, that just no to one's be doing clear, it. to be clear, this is an example of an incredulous argument. Wait, which one? The uh... the comparison I made said if Trump's going to be if, <laughs> if Trump is going to be responsible for the greatest decrease in jobs and increase in jobs in the history of the country, then Biden is responsible. For a seventy-five percent shortfall in jobs expectations, I, I, I mean, I, I don't think that, I don't know. I, I disagree with that. I, I, I really do. As I, don't I said, think that, this is an example of an incredulous argument. I don't think that that Biden is responsible for the twenty-five percent or the 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 factor of four miss on the jobs report. I do think that you'd have to be an idiot to have believed the jobs growth would have been higher than that when we are paying people greater than minimum wage to sit at home, masturbate, and play video games. Right? Well, I mean, like the same set of circumstances, obviously your results are going to be similar, but we have to assume that the circumstances wouldn't be similar, you know, with Donald Trump at the rate. <sighs> Uh, well, but he signed a he signed he started this process, right? He signed the first one into law, and then he put in the extended unemployment benefits in July, and then he extended it again in October. So realistically, yeah, he no, I mean, if Trump is absolutely of, uh, situations uh, same. You know, rules, he probably yeah, would have actually. He probably would have put out the actual the full two thousand dollars instead of just the fourteen hundred. Hey, so I, I suspect he would have. I don't have an issue. I, I, I honestly like. I mean, aside from the public spending, you know, should we do it? Should we not? I have less of an issue with the two thousand dollars than I do the enhanced unemployment benefits. Yeah, you should no, never. Like... You should never give people a recurring check to sit around and do nothing. You see, you I should have. Never... Like, I should have just gotten myself like a some sort of shitty job just to be able to get cut, just to be able to get cut from it and get unemployment. Well, if you so I sat down I sat down to Holy calculate shit, it. So when you fit, when you look at what money was given for people to stay at home, it was over thirty thousand dollars was given to people to stay at home. Oh yeah. No, there that, are people that, who are not working that now is, that are making significantly more money than I have made throughout this period. Yep. Yep. Uh, I mean if you wanna if you wanna be in the, the one another point is that because that is available to you to stay at home and collect that unemployment benefit, you have to make significantly more than that in order for it to oh. be worth your time. So hold on now. You see, you've got to you got to understand. Biden said. Biden said that <laughs> they're going to make great strides. That if you're unemployed and you have a job up, a, a job is off is uh, available to you, um, that they're going to cut off your unemployment if you don't take the job. <laughs> Well, the the only problem is that you have people basically going in and intentionally failing interviews, right? Or so they're just not going to do it, and he's not so, going to be fucked. Well, so I've been, I've been. Note, actually, just uh, I believe it was just today, our friend Joe came out, and uh, our friend Fuhrer Joe, I should say, hair, hair Joe, uh, Heil Joe, that um, you're going to need to actually not turn down those things anymore. He's. Uh, He's really not, uh, really not cool with people just turning down, down these jobs. Can well, you, you know, what's really funny is, is when they first asked him about it, you know, he didn't think it had anything to do with the enhanced unemployment. Oh, yeah, so know. now, now they're, really now they're slowly really gonna. And, and this is, and and by the way, like you know, one of the the things that I think that we, we we were so so months ago, we turned around and we said that crypto is up, and you probably shouldn't invest because it's probably gonna pop, and we were wrong. Right. Yeah. And part of the reason that we were wrong, I, I actually still stand by our original prediction in terms of within uh, a, a short 
It, it would have fit the pattern. I still, I actually still stand by that because at the end of the day, we have set up a situation wherein people do not have to pay their rent. They make more than they've ever made on unemployment. And, oh yeah, because it's unemployment, they don't necessarily have to pay taxes right away. We have flooded the system with money and a whole bunch of people. You have, have to also keep in mind, though, there is, there's a significant amount of other capital that's come into the different markets. That, that's, and there's that's a lot true. more trading happening above that level of retail trader. I, there's a they, lot more happening above that. They're trying to institutional um, capital is trying to catch up. I, I got that, and I understand that, but that's I don't think that's the bulk of the money that's going in there. I really don't. I don't think that's where the bulk of the money pump is coming well, in. That's unfortunately going to be one of the aspects of crypto that's, I think, a positive thing. can't really tell where it's coming in from right that, now. That, that's true, but you can also take a look at the stock market. So uh, with GameStop and all the rest of that, you had a whole bunch of people who pumped a stock that was worth probably about 8 to 20 bucks all the way up into the $300 range. So I'm pretty sure Just that we can... Just a there, since we are mentioning it, GameStop uh, closed today at 143.22. So it's pretty well... It's kind of set itself in the rank of high-tier stocks. Un until... Until... They stop the unemployment check because the second that they, they turn around and they say, you actually have to pay your landlord now, you owe taxes on that money, and by the way, uh, you also have to – you're no longer getting enhanced unemployment. That money is going to bleed out of that system really fast. It's going to create the largest stock market crash and crypto crash the world has ever seen. I'm not a financial advisor, blah, 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 blah. I actually kind of disagree. You're going to see a lot of that crash, but I think you're going to see less of a crash than you might expect. You see, you're also assuming – well, so that that argument – there's a couple things here. M0 is still going to be where it is, which is That's fucking true. high. That's true. But also, I, there's not – the holding a crypto asset does not require you to continue paying to hold that crypto asset. So – no, 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 no. The you're, you're money missing. might change, but the flow is not. The money's not necessarily going to you're, get sucked back out to pay taxes on stuff. You're, you're missing. You're missing the point. I'm not saying that you actually have to pay taxes on your crypto. No, no, I'm I get it. I get it. You're talking about paying taxes on right. the money that have, they were paid, etc. You have a whole bunch of people who have been financially unwise during this entire thing that have been yeah. basically reaping a whole bunch of benefits. They're going to have a ten thousand dollar bill from the government and their landlord. Right, and then on top of that, they're also no longer going to get unemployment. And yeah, but I don't know if they're happens, going to right they're out of going to attempt to lick. The, absolutely, they would. The first thing they're going to do is any money that they put into the market, they're going to try to get back so that they can start paying not, their bills. Not a scale that's going to cause that kind of crash. You don't think so? I, I do. Really don't either. I, don't I think, think that if there's really going to be a crash, it's going to be a bear dip, and you're just going to see institutions come in and suck up that crypto. And then you're gonna jack the price back up because they think they can manipulate it. Yeah, it's, it's a little I don't know. Established at this point, I would say. You know, it's a little bit too I, firm as a as an asset. Or most people who have been in crypto, even still, and I, I know that it's it's gotten so pervasive that it's gotten out into people's hands, people who are just legitimately shit with money. But like mm -hmm. enough of the people who use crypto are aware of are aware enough about crypto to hold it as an asset. I I just I, – I don't know. I, I think that there is a huge amount of artificial money, right? Mm -hmm. They had nothing they could spend it on. Oh. You have a whole bunch of people that had a whole bunch of money with nothing they can spend it on. Okay. Except Look who's in office right now, and when do you think this is going to precipitate? Because if it's going to – if it happens in Biden's term – you know, no I mean, we'll see how the midterms go, but my guess is that if it's going to happen, it'll probably happen sometime next year. And I, if it's before I, elections, if it's before elections, then they'll probably end up passing something to make themselves look good. I, I and then blame it on Republicans for anything that's negative. I expect a small dip after taxes are due this Saturday, right? It's going to be a small dip there, and then it's going to depend on how they phase out the unemployment. Right. If they just cut it off at the knees, which they very well could do because it looks really bad right now. Like it was oh, it was it a pretty so impressive bad. the job numbers were like basically missing a zero. Yeah. Well and that's 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 <laughs> the point is it looks so bad that and that, that all falls back on them. 
right? Uh, it this was amazing. It was amazing trying to listen to the spin on this. It was, you know, oh, oh yeah, Jen rich. Saki. So what was it? I'm like, well, people are people are working. Shut up, lady. Yeah. So, so I mean, it, the the reality is, we are seeing, for the first time on the national public stage, we tried progressive ideas and they blew up exactly as we said they would, right? Like without fail, they they managed to are you successfully they didn't build us back better. It turns out they didn't, and that is not going to look good for the Democrats. So it's very possible that they will actually use this to oust the progressives, right? And and the problem that you're going to have is is you know how much of this, how much of a hit to their actual image are the Dems willing to take? And historically speaking, that hasn't been a particularly large one. So Steve, since you seem to be in such a happy mood. I want you to do something that I had already done, because uh, I'm guessing you haven't gone and, and read the, any of the conclusions of this paper yet. I, I you know what, I, I, I told you, it, I saw the word ethnography, and it's just, I, yeah, no. it, it's like, it's like it. Uh, I, want, I, I want you to me. read it out loud. It really triggers me. Is worth your while. There is <laughs> nothing. There is nothing that comes out say, of ethnography need, that is worth my while. You need to say the words out loud so that you can hear them. <laughs> In your own voice, I, I don't I don't know if I do. I I, I, uh, I think it's it's a it's a transformative step that you need to take in your life. Is uh, you know Just what? Idiot's fucking it's, words out loud. I saw enough of that to to put it into the bin with feminist glaciology and yep. you know. All right, page yeah. no, you're doing it this. Page fifteen. Done. Page fifteen in the PDF. Start at the bottom of the left column. All right, let's see. Oh, I Second. don't want to donate to Cornell University. They have plenty of money. What the hell? All right. I did have this open on my phone, and now I've got to find where it is on the actual computer. This is yeah, quite the, enough. The implications and conclusions are there. So, uh, I should have said when they adorable. said things when I was reading through, because you should not be citing shit in your conclusion section. No. Like, no you, you, first off, yeah, I had it all I, done, I, Aaron. I will state... There are there are a couple things that I bin automatically as trash. First off, if your paper is only referencing other papers and is not doing data analysis on their data, I believe it's automatically should go in the trash. Right? All you're basically doing is is the equivalent of an English paper. You which do block uh, quotes that should go in the trash. Right. Right. Like <laughs> it, that's references. If you're doing sixth grade block quotes. One hundred and six. That's impressive. That's that's kind of astounding. Oh my god, there's too many dashes. It's like, ugh. Too many right. isms and ists. So, page 15 in the PDF, section 6, skip the first paragraph and start in the second paragraph. Bottom left of the page. Whoa. Uh, Anti-maskers. Yeah. Okay. Your people. Hierarchical. It's hierarchical. First hierarchical. off, all right. Hold on. Read, read it out loud. It, it no, no, no. It just it, it, it as somebody as somebody as somebody, as somebody who is anti-mask, I do not re reject the hierarchical social model. I sit there and take a look at the studies that are produced, and I don't turn around and listen to an in inherent. Okay. Somebody who is a quote unquote expert, especially when the studies are like fifty percent of them support the idea of wearing masks and fifty percent of them oppose wearing no, masks. Wait, you tell me that you don't espouse a vision of science that is radically egalitarian and individualist? This this thing, it, I I swear at this point I kinda want to with the drum set. Egalitarian what the fuck is this shit? It's a, it's really it gets special. So much better, buddy. Just keep reading. <laughs> It's, it's a very, no, it's a very no, this special, is bad. This is bad. Event. It's touching me. We need to pull out the dolls. This is touching me in the bad place. He's, he's reading. No, the, the third paragraph in this section I, is designed to piss off rational people. I, I, I Well, I mean, it, it says literally, like... this study forces us to see that coronavirus skeptics champion science as a personal practice that prizes rationality and autonomy. What? Yes, that's that's like, literally what yeah, science that's is. Science. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, wait. No, no. It? Science is listening I to mean, the expert tell you what you're allowed to there's, do. There's the Mertonian norms, and the Mertonian norms explicitly state that as part of science, or trying to, like, define what science, what is good science and bad, one of the key ones is the fact that any individual should be able to look at the exact same data and draw the same conclusion. And if you can't, it's probably not very good data. You don't. You see, that just sounds like heresy. And uh, you need to go and confess your sins Risk to science. recapitulating narratives that anti-mask individual. What? Basically, the deficit-based stuff is you're too stupid to understand what you're talking about. Oh, they even made sure what they, they found check on basically that. is that there are they, so many buzzwords in here. What they basically found is that people are too are actually not too stupid to understand what they're talking about. They understand what they're talking about. Calls they say what they're data. talking about. Wait, calls and they actually for show data, data or scientific literacy, therefore risk recapitulating narratives that anti mask user rather than the coordinated information cans recognize contribute to this first. So basically, they're saying that people who are anti-mask actually understand what the fuck they're doing, and when you sit there and well, you call them out and say, "Hey, generally, you know what the hell you're saying. doing," right? So, so this this by the way is the same same kind of shit that you see in um, climate change and climate science. Oh, they so every actually, single time they come out and they try to mentioned as a matter of fact specifically. Yeah, you're not, yeah, you're not done yet. Also, well, that was that was before that paragraph. So ask end of the second paragraph. Yeah. Calls for media literacy. Yeah. What? How do they fit white supremacy into this? Smoke screen. Does that sound familiar to you at all? An ethics smoke screen? What the fuck? How the fuck did they fit that into this paper? They've they've crammed every single buzz. How does that they can how does oh. white supremacy come into a paper no, about I mask getting... versus anti mask? Scan down. Tell me what date do you see in that paragraph? I was a hundred percent correct. Anything with ethnography goes straight in the trash can. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. So Powerful then there's research and media organizations paid for <laughs> by the tobacco. What the fuck is this? Yeah, they they just they 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 threw the spaghetti at the wall, man. Prompting people to think for themselves. So good. So it's it's bad to encourage people to think for themselves. This is this is excellent. Well, it could lead to horrifying ends, as they say themselves. How did they sit there and bring this up with a goddamn January sixth like march on the Capitol building? So you it's came into this. Oh. You, you arrived right as I was getting uh, to the end of the know, paragraph. I, you know what? I read through the first paragraph, and I told you my response before yeah. you ever started this stupid thing. And it was, it said ethnography, therefore it's wrong. Yeah, that was kind of what I saw, and then I kept reading anyway because I was I mean, in the you shower. Should, you should. You should just You should just throw it out in the bin. It's, no, I, am, no, I, I, read, I read more than that, and I'm pissed off because this came from I'm fucking let MIT. i take over for a quick half second. I'll be right back. No, this came from Cornell. Or at least it was public. No, 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 no. Archive is hosted by Cornell. This is an MIT paper. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. that's the problem right there. Well, I guess... MIT, I guess... who doesn't give out any arts degrees, they only give out science degrees. Why? Because they're so fucking in favor of science, they're going to post this shit. This is unmitigated shit. This is garbage. The five yeah. authors, it took five fucking people to write this. And this is why academia is bullshit. So I was saying earlier, if you want to see what they mean by the ivory tower, this paper is it. Human computer interaction. What the fuck does this have to do with human computer interaction research? Oh, it's because you see a piece of you see a, a piece of data on a screen. You looked at a computer visual a computer model, or you had a line on a on a graph. Like just, it, it just it just, just reads say like this. someone passed a picture. It just reads like the same shit. So, so at least at least there was one study, and I think I've linked it before here that um, was done. They decided to try to go this path uh, with yeah. with climate change stuff, and their conclusion was that uh, they actually came away with a conclusion that skeptics are citing the same kind of papers, the same quality journals, the same the same bit. They're just putting a weight differently, and where they walked into the whole entire thing thinking these guys were wrong. 
in yeah. reality, they're making the exact the skeptics for climate are making the exact same arguments that are being made overall for science. Is you know how do we weight our data? Epistemological you know ranking of different types of things, and this this looks like no different than some of the other studies that came out that would be like, well, well you'll see they even climate these skeptics studies. know more than the people uh, know more about climate and CO two and the interactions associated with it. Uh, oh, even the climatologists? Know, yeah. yeah. Even, no, no, no. They don't know more than the climatologists. They know so, – so on average, climate skeptics know more about climate and science than do the people who are not climate skeptics. Uh, so essentially if you well, happen that's to be – That's the general thing that I think – and I mentioned this earlier. I think it's a, that's a general thing that is reasonable to state there that if you have the people who are going to follow things that are dogmatic like religious assholes, then of course they're going to be – less skeptical they're just gonna say believe the science if you actually ask a fucking question you're gonna get yelled at and told to comply and obey well, and repeat it, the same it, garbage and, and this is you actually ask the question i just i mean uh, it's it's you know sometimes you can trash. take things gratis sometimes you can take things gratis but like at some point you're gonna have a question and if they can't answer that question then and they just tell you to believe shit there's no reason to believe it. Well, don't you believe the science? Are you a scientist? So there's, there's one other paragraph in this that I wanted to read out, and it's short, mercifully. And it's the last one in this section. So they say, in other words, our paper introduces new ways of thinking about, quote, democratizing data analysis and visualization. Instead of treating increased adoption of data-driven storytelling as an unqualified good, we show that data visualizations are not simply tools that people use to understand the epidemiological events around them. They are a battleground that highlight the contested role of expert of expertise in modern American life. So this me, is just, just bullshit right here. Let me just throw something at that because understanding what they're actually saying here, this strikes me as something I've heard before. Uh, do you guys remember when CNN said about the WikiLeaks papers? You yeah. can't look at this. Only we can look at this. It would be illegal. It's illegal if you look at it. Yeah. I mean, this smacks of that very same kind of thinking. Well, and it, that's exactly what this is to me. It, I don't know. I, I, I think the other thing to, to keep in mind is that uh, – and this is the like before, before you posted this paper, right? I, I posted a link to the CDC. As something to talk about yesterday. I apologize. I, I was just I had like six thousand calories in me. And it was Sorry, I I was I really needed to shower. So well, I mean that's <laughs> I that's true. To make it on time. That's true. Um, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, Cuomo. All right, I got the joke. Uh, well, you know what? Actually, so I was thinking, <laughs> did, were you the person who posted the the like the dude who was like from Germany? Who turned around and was arguing with some dude from Israel, and the response was, you know, go up your chi go up the chimney like your grandfather, or something like that. <laughs> that, that sounds was like bold. That sounds that was... like something I'd post and laugh at. I have no idea. I, I it was it was pretty impressive. I was I was stunned. Like I was laughing for a good twenty minutes. I was like, holy shit! I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? Like, what is this Santa Claus? And then I looked at the flags. I'm like, oh, holy shit! <laughs> yeah, that's bold. That's bold. That's actually that sounds familiar. I don't know. Uh, but in any case, I, I uh, sorry, I got distracted. Um, one of the things that I posted before this is the absolute bullshit nonsense that people are posting, or that the CDC was posting about COVID, right? Like one of the things that that engineers are trained to do is we are supposed to take complex data and complex situations and break it down to a measurable identifiable statistic and that's not in the sense of like statistics that means hey this is how we rank in hierarchy hierarchically rank uh potential choices for what we want to do and this is how we're justifying that ranking right and you look at the the uh the cdc so, so what you want to do is you want to find so for something like like covid right death rates you're going to want death rates by age group because we know that the data is stratified and so you just want to sit there and see that Right, you go to the CDC the, uh, website, data here from the and they CDC do it. Actually, I'm looking at it right now. It's all ranked well. relative to five they to seventeen years old. 
Yeah. They, so why they, is they that the reference group? That should so, not be the so, reference group. So so here's the here's the kicker part, right? Like they should have just posted the actual statistic. In order to post that yeah. page, they instead of giving me the data that I wanted, right? Instead of giving me the data that I wanted, they had to go an entire other step further in order to make the data look as big no, as is look, physically possible. You post this data in addition to the basis data. You do not right. post this in isolation. And, and by the way, you Ever. can't find you can't actually find the base rate associated with the five to the seventeen year olds, right? It, it's not on that page, at least not that I could find. I mean, right? I could I'm probably sure... like find a way to get to that data. Oh, from, I'm from I'm sure, know, but, but like. That's not the point, right? Like I that's guess, obfuscation, yeah. right? So you, you turn around and you come in and you say, huh, look at all this anti-mask people. Look at all these people who are sitting there and spinning so, these alternative narratives to COVID. Well, let's see. You literally stumble fucked your way to make things as obfuscated as possible here, that just, is obvious to anyone. And now you're wondering why I come in with a straightforward data point and blow your argument away. It's well, because let's just go ahead and what I say and say, hey, and that makes sense. This. Just to just to make sure people are like clear on what the major the major fuck up here is. It's not a fuck up. It's intentional. Yeah, that's it's it's intentionally fucking up then. It's not fucking up. They did what they wanted to do. Right, is the data on the page or did they fuck that up? Uh, they uh fucked that up. So that's all right. Semantics aside, the major <laughs> the major hang up here is that the five to set the reference group that they're specifying. A doesn't have a basis set for why they specified that group aside from it being the lowest value. Yep. Because that's clearly why they did that. So so they, and they B calculated... doesn't that doesn't give you any idea what the reference group rate is, and that's yep. the major problem because it could be a difference it's... between one and two for the twice factor, or yeah. it could be a difference between a million and two million. The the best part is that in the table it actually says this is the reference group. So they didn't actually provide a value. Right. So what they did they should have put a was fucking they value calculated, there. they calculated and this is this is what happened in the background before they put up their table. They calculated the, the essentially the case fatality rate and they put that into a table. And then they took everybody and they divided their case fatality rate by the case fatality rate for the five to seventeen year old. The funny thing and is we could actually figure that part out. Five, I'm sure we could. Well, we have the we have the we have the relative risk based on these rate ratios, right? Yep. We have the uh, the general. You know, we assume certain averaging laws kind of apply between the state and, and national population. We have approximately the age distribution that these death rates are applicable to. So we could just weight that by the category scales available here. You know, zero to four, five to seventeen, eighteen sure. to twenty nine, et cetera. And just sum all that up, we have the CFR. And then we can uh, figure out what the reference group rate is and then mock that. But I, that's not, I mean, that's entirely, I, I too, much that. that, that's entirely I, too much work. I get that. But, but the point is that they took an extra step to obfuscate the key reference. Yeah, now it takes me 15 actually, steps to get to the goddamn data. That should, I, right. should take me zero steps. And, and more importantly, they actually had to calculate the data that I wanted in that first step. And then they had to calculate something else in order to make it not look as bad for the case argument that they're trying to make. Right, and this is this is the kind of shit that, that they come in and they say, "Hey, it's that masking." People. This was updated in February, by the way. Yeah, this, was, this it, the last updated February eighteenth. They oh, wow. they so, they have they have specifically obfuscated the data because they don't want people like me coming in and making the case that, "Hey, it's a one in ten thousand or less death rate for my age group. Why the fuck should I get the vaccine?" Instead, they wanted to show that I have three hundred times the five to seventeen year olds. Which is like zero, and three thousand, or you know, what is it, eight, one hundred and eighty, two hundred times zero is still fucking zero. Extremely, we can do the extremely stupid calculation. Uh, so two plus one plus ten. This assumes all age groups have equal populations. But you, you know that's plus not true, right? Forty-five like... plus one thirty. And, and oh yeah, by the way. Part of the problem is that they're also going to be throwing in all the fucking old people that the Democrats killed when they shoved them all, all into right. nursing homes. So, so the um, basically what this says, assuming equal populations, which is bullshit. Uh, assuming equal populations, so we have if we total up all the factors here, multipliers, it's thirteen thousand eight hundred twenty-eight. That's their basically that's their their um, 
if we were going to put an integer on it, that's their denominator. Sure. Okay. Again, this is the extremely stupid calculation. And by the but way, then, this I'll is... have to pull up that fucking visualizer one second. Yeah. So, so what what he's trying to do is he's trying to put up a weighted average, right? Or the equivalent of a weighted average. This is this is gonna the weights are all one for this average. Not but the, but the problem is, even if we're going to do it that way, yeah. we're st still throwing an absurd number of assumptions that we know aren't true at the whole entire thing. And I still want to sit there and I want to see that data broken down a little bit further into states that forced, uh, you know, COVID patients in a nursing yeah. home versus states that don't. I guarantee that you that matters. I guarantee oh, you that the states that are doing better right now have better data available and they're showing it. I actually went through and I looked. I wanted to look at. Um, the the death oh, and sure hospitalization rates hard to find. Well, I wanted to look at the death and hospitalization rates of all the different states is broken down, and you wouldn't guess it, but uh, it was like all the red states had data available and all the fucking blue states didn't. What, what a fucking surprise! Well, it's yeah, yeah, they, had, like, had, they had like aggregate statistics in a certain sense, but they wouldn't tell you the other data that allow you to actually get anything useful out of it. Yeah, no, and that's that's kind of a. A routine thing. I mean, this is – you turn around and you, you start talking about why – the the bigger question that these people who publish these the, like papers like the MIT paper should be asking is why the fuck are other people skeptical of what they're presenting? Because if, they, if other people are skeptical of what they're presenting, then maybe there's something that they are doing to trigger that skepticism. The problem that science it's has right now is people are losing faith oh, dude, in the you should. You because should have been in the twat argument I was in because this guy brought up the replication crisis and I was so ready to get into it with him. But this is a guy who think who thinks that he has a contrived circumstance for two plus two equals five. So wait, what, what I wasn't going to get into up, it with him. What was he bringing up with the replication crisis? Uh, it was like just one of the butter. things that was it was just one of the things that was cited. And it's just like, oh, God, I could trample you on this thing. Was was the replication crisis what he was trying to cite for the objective truth is not really objective reality? It, it was. I'm sure that that tangentially that was where it would have gone had I gone after him. So so the the quick response is yeah, except the, for the fact that you're fucking completely missing the fact that scientists do a shitty job actually designing their studies, and yeah, that's why we have not, a every, not everybody does the proper analysis of experiments before actually doing their uh, goddamn experiments. Half half of the people who are sitting there and publishing statistics don't actually properly do statistics. So the I, other and, half that are in the replication crisis didn't properly control their data, and the third half because that's how we do fucking math in you know, postmodernist world, the third half of well, people that, that sat there and, and did their shit, they uh, they just didn't have a large enough sample size, and they opt they optimized their study based on... P-hacking. Uh, yeah, P-hacking. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, yeah, but no one knows what that is. Look, there's a buzzword for it, goddammit, I'm using there, it. There is, a, yes, so, so the short version Phrase, is, whatever. and by the way, I've actually presented a study where they did this, this was the one where they were claiming that sexism in STEM and blah, blah, blah. Oh, that, and, yeah. Okay. And that was based off of, like, a sample size of something like 67. And the reason it was 67 <laughs> instead of larger than that was they uh, they somehow calculated before they got the data that 67 is what they would need to show it. But And then they tried to do Fisher's test for, like, variance between the data okay, and that it was statistically significant but if you actually sit there and break down the data that they have it's not statistically significant at the pz is equal to 0 0.05 level unless you start talking about female professors rating female students and how much they would have to excessively train them. <laughs> which sounds like it would not work for okay either. so by the way current cfr is again still on the order of two percent. So uh, yeah, but that's that's for total again, that's for total rate, and and I would yeah, hey hey again, assuming an equally weighted population, which is not true, and also the, and the six percent versus ninety four percent thing, dividing which... two percent, so two divided by one three, eight two eight, is one point four times ten to the minus four. You should do you should do like 
0.2% divided by 16. I don't see why. Uh, that, that accounts for the difference between the people who would be... That, that's the difference between comorbidities and non-comorbidities. So 6% of the people who are counted as COVID, assi assuming, by the way, that the diagnosis was remotely true, which we've covered in previous episodes, is, is not yeah, based point on one testing. Five. Six percent of cases. The CDC has a number that says six percent of cases is essentially due to COVID, and ninety-four percent of cases is due to other comorbidities. So you're saying due to other comorbidities. So like, so six percent is people who are otherwise healthy contracted COVID and died. Ninety-four percent is people who had a pre-existing condition, and then died when they contracted COVID. Okay. So the the motorcycle crash guy who died of COVID is in that 94% statistic instead of the 6%. There's other things that came into play. Now, you can turn around and say that COVID made it bad or worse or something like that, but at the same time, there's no way to distinguish well, whether or not it was your time or whether it you. was your time with COVID. Let me, let me throw one at you here. Uh, George Floyd, uh, and yeah, I know, laughable topic here, but George Floyd's lungs were three times heavier than they were supposed to be, and they were very they were turgid and stiff. It is no wonder he could not breathe. Uh, absolutely, it's no wonder so, he couldn't breathe. Imagine if you had a he, lethal dose of fentanyl and imagine, an overdose of methamphetamine. Right, and oh and yeah, his, by the way, he, he was a drug user for 15 years. And his lungs narcotics. were three times the mass that they were supposed to be because they were so they had so much edema. So imagine if someone who had lungs that were three times the mass they were supposed to be and had trouble breathing got into a motorcycle accident. I, I mean. I understand what you're you saying. Know, obviously, if their I head got it. crushed, it wouldn't matter. But like, if they got, like, you know, well, if they had but, like their liver again, punctured or something, you know, it's again. Let me let me offer you this, right? Let's say that there was. I'm just uh, saying that like, sometimes life's complicated, and you know it, and I know it. Ab absolutely, but I will I will make the case that if six percent of of cases are where somebody was otherwise healthy and then died of COVID, and ninety four percent. I'd be willing to multiply that 6% by 3, and I'd still be comfortable with the numbers uh, be divided, being divided out of the whole entire thing as okay, no, actual case fatality risks. 2 times 0. Point, you said you wanted to multiply by 3, 1, 8. No, no, no. It's That's 0.36%. What is it? 2% divided by 16 multiplied by 3. Why, why would you do that? Or 0. 0.06 times 3, whatever you want to do. I don't know. I just do... 2, as in 2%, so I can keep it in percent, and then multiply that by 0. 0.18. So yeah, you can do that, multiplying, too. Multiplying, so you can do 18%. Because, god damn it, because? 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. Fuck you, I'm faster. <laughs> oh, you and your math. I mean, I have a calculator here, so... I also could have just multiplied 18 by 2. It's... It's 0.36%. If you right. if you said you're willing to accept three times but, higher, but, and, and, that's the and upper bound on. on what you're willing to accept is 0.36 percent. Hold on, let's uh, let's pause there for a moment. That is the overall case fatality rate for everyone in the nation. Yeah. If we sit there and we break it down into the the the. So this is one thing what we really field. need is not this risk rate ratio, whatever this bullshit is. We need the actual death stats. Yes. And the actual infections. <laughs> and then the the actual numbers the actual hospitalizations. Of, yeah, all this reference group shit is just. And it should be. It should be thing, like this is where we like we go off and we like bitch at each other for a little while, and then we'll agree on something. The agreement here is this data is garbage. It's yes. completely fucking useless. This is at best propaganda. And and the question is why is it that people are skeptical of the mainstream narrative on COVID? No, well. Again, because I turn around and I do a simple fucking Google search and I expect to get a simple fucking answer, and instead we've spent 30 minutes sitting there and talking about how this data is shit. Well, so here again to point out like this this is a useful piece of information, but only if it's presented with the basis data that generated it. That is the only time this information will be useful, unless you're so, trying to so, use it to propagandize people. I disagree with that. I believe that the useful data is the base rate data, and this is nothing more than an no. exaggerated step to make make a, an argument without making an argument. No, I, this is this is fine if it's with the original data. That's the only time this is useful. 
And again, unless you're trying to propagandize people. Go to bed. This is the kind of like so if we were to go back to the whole Cartman thing with the future, like I have no doubt at this point that the otters would have named themselves I fucking love science. And they would have said they, this is the kind of shit you would publish for that, right? I guarantee you this showed up on that idiot's blog. I I I am sure well this is this is the problem is that this is the kind of data that the left is using to make their case and it's uh, it is simultaneously a a propaganda piece and also ultimately Well okay, let's do it for prostate cancer, all right? Uh the reference group is now 5 to 17 years old. What's the no. ref what's the re what's, what's the relative ratio? What's what's the rate ratio for death from prostate cancer? For sixty-five to seventy-four year olds, relative right. to five to seventeen, yes, these that people. I mean, this is a good example of right. This heart attacks, uh, pancreatitis, yep, dying from the flu. I, I hate that as an example, but fuck it, we'll put it there. How about or dying from Ebola? How about that one? Again, this is only useful in the context of the data that we use to prepare it. If yep. it's provided with that data, well, it's, it's unless it's, you're trying to make an argument that does not rely on that data. First off, there's, there's two aspects to this, right? That there are, if I was to present this and I was to be making my case, I would be presenting the base rate data. That's right. the first thing that I would have. The second component that I would have is I would compare that to other relative life and health risks, such as the flu. And whether people like it or not, that comparison would be going in there as well, and I would be showing this this there. Sure. I will well, it, also... It's not as a comparison if you're not just sitting there going, oh, it's the flu. If you want right. to say, okay, let's look at the actual data, then that's fine. I'm all I for would, that. I would also sit there and attempt to identify any potential factors that may have made the data look worse, like shoving COVID patients into nursing homes. That'll make all of that. Not only will that make the case fatality rate worse, but it'll actually also make it worse for seniors because now you have people who are in nursing homes are not exactly the healthiest. That's why they're in nursing homes, right? So, so we have we, we that would you would have to remove that from the data set and say, this is what you know, if we hadn't pursued this policy decision, we get this number versus well, that. that's when you can stop, all of, you that, can all of that would be prevented presented on a single slide, and this would no, be wouldn't. this is no, no, my no, no, case. No. No, yes, no, no, it wouldn't be on one slide. Be. Absolutely, it would. You know, you don't put that shit on one slide. That's too big of a. All right, are you presenting? Are you presenting at a fucking football field with like? No, 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 no. With you a three hundred yard, you just, a three hundred foot long piece just, of paper. You just tabulate the data, but it should be it should be a full thing of tabulations with these three breakdowns. It's so like again, three data tables. I put I put tables like this all the time in. You, so, you just cut it to the the most useful bits. Right. So, point being, so now that you've got my bias on how you should put tables on slides, this should give some weight to what I'm about to say, which is, if I was presenting this table, I would not put that on a separate slide. It would be directly underneath the basis yes. data that generated it. And that would and be... It would be I, I would yes. never separate this away from that. Because yep. if I was making a point, it would be to put a circle around one of these numbers, and I would be directly relating that back to the base data that generated it. All, all of that is correct. My, it, my laser pointer would be making lines on the slide. Yep. You know, here uh, to here, here to here, here to here. As much as so, – so while I agree with you that there is a case that you could use a data presentation like this, you're absolutely right. The base data should be involved, and the fact that they took that out and they, they had to calculate the, the one useful statistics here anyways, the fact that they took that out and then put in this nonsense – below it is exactly why people are skeptical uh, of the mainstream narrative. I mean, like, how can you not be skeptical when you see intentional That's the thing is, I don't even want to call it a mainstream narrative because this is this is prepared bullshit. Well, I, I mean, it, the, I, I would say that the CDC is supposed to be the officiating source. It's supposed how to be. Not, how I, I can you not I think that they're very well aware. Of the CDC, if this is if you ask a simple question and you get an answer like this, how can I you think, possibly sit there and be like, "Yep, that's cool"? Good I think at this point, the CDC is very well aware that not only did they get caught with their pants down last year, that they're definitely not at this point, definitely not the primary source of data that people are willing to go and ask. Like oh, yeah, if this was this was last updated February eighteenth. A, uh, a lot of their cachet. 
Like, I would not go to the CDC for epidemiological data at this point. They're just fucking unreliable. Like, like I said last year, they weren't even following their own damn protocol when they were handling an unknown disease. So, like, it, it just is just mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake. At least, like, there's people there who give a shit. Unlike, say, the WHO, where they're just, they've given up and they're like, okay, Tedros, tell me what to do. Hey, let's do this for China. Fuck you. Like, that, that's, you know, a whole other thing and all, but, like, the CDC has a lot of work to do to get back to where it was and functional. Which would be great, you know, to have a, a functional CDC again. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? But th this, is a, this is a glaring symptom of dysfunction that they presented this data without the basis data referenced anywhere. Well, and and again, I don't think it's dysfunction. I think it's functioning exactly as Let's they. Let's see. I click on the four. Right? Yeah, no, I would agree with that. And is, actually, is this, this is this a bug not... or a feature, my friend? Yeah, exactly. And the answer is this okay. is working as intended. And you know, so then you go actually... down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. You go down to the bottom, and you see that you know, obviously you see the citations on there, right? Like on the the column. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you go down there, and you say, okay, well, how do I get to this data? You say, all right. They have this thing here. They have different reports, blah, blah, blah. And you go ahead and you click on that. What do you get? You get here. You have this commons thing. You have a data set. You can contact the data set owner. And view data. Oh, there we go. We can create a visualization. Like So you have to go, like, this is not the sign in to save the Fuck off. I don't want to do that shit. You can go through and use interactive tools, but the summary data that they have given is so useless without the basis data that you have to then, if you don't know to click on this reference and go find the data, and you just see that table, what do you go away with? I, it, I want to believe that someone has asked that question. Nope. I don't, I, don't I, well, think that, I, I think that there's a, there's a culture at play right now where they probably didn't. That's that's me being charitable. Well, I mean, we well, can actually it, pretty yeah. safely assume that if we just look at... Uh, well, the alternative is they did ask that question, and they no, said, I, well, I, they'll I just think, do it. I think what ended up happening is the same thing that we've seen with what they've repealed. They've pulled, uh, what I think it's two studies on this so far, right? The first one was the Johns Hopkins study associated with, um, uh, what is it? It was the one metric that we were going to talk about in terms of like measuring the actual efficacy of this whole thing. Excess deaths, right? They pulled sure. the Johns Hopkins study on excess deaths because people were using that to counter the official narrative. That is why they pulled that study. It wasn't because there was anything wrong with the analysis. It wasn't because the conclusion was incorrect. It wasn't because of statistical fraud. They pulled the study because people were using it to argue against the official narrative. Well, indeed, not only that, that's actually something very similar happened with a number of the transgender studies in uh, yep. pubescent youth. Yes, it has. And and actually there's You guys there's... are just uh you guys are just being some of these these uh anti-maskers that are talked about from this MIT study. You, you know what? I I won't even stoop low enough to call you an uh, an ethnographer, so, you know, that's just an insult that is too far. I appreciate that. You know, it's a little thing. We we can we can talk about putting your your grandpa up the chimney, but we cannot call you an ethnographer. I have I have standards and a line. Bless you, sir. Bless you. Yep. You see, I'm filling the respect for my little hat. The one that says competent scientist on it, not the one that's in Hebrew. No. Oh, oh, ah. okay. Just curious there. Thank you for clarifying. Much obliged. I'm sure all the listeners as well will appreciate that. So, you know, I, I just, I mean, it's, I, I do not understand it, what, what is, it, it stuns me. You know, I, I got into, I came into the climate skeptic thing and that's where I started because I, I came into the climate skeptic thing because I it fell into the replication crisis, right? I just graduated with my psych degree um, and, and it was, I was, repulsed by how that field was conducting itself right they would find they would find for every good study in that field they'd have two or three studies that they'd publish solely for political grounds 
right? It, it, they would have no basis, but they would teach it in their textbooks. And, and like, you, you just, if you come in for, as an actual scientist and you see that stuff, you can't be anything but repulsed. And I got into the climate stuff from that because I'm like, all right, well, you know, everything else can't be completely screwed up. And then you go down the climate train and you, you see these kinds of things. And now we're starting to see it come into public health policy discussions where instead of sitting there, and I know we've ranted about it before, instead of sitting there and having an actual risk assessment where we sit down and we have intelligent discussions like rational adults, we instead go for the, oh, my God, everybody's going to fucking die. So, and, uh, you know, cloth masks are great. So uh, uh, I, had, I had mentioned on Twatter that I was so ready to tear a paper and I saw there's several new assholes and someone asked me what was up. And towards the end of the discussion we had, this is just before the we started recording here. Um, my favorite, my favorite response from them was, "What the fuck is ethnography?" Yep. Well, I mean, yeah. you, I, and, I, and, I, and the I one guy who does kind of after know. me was right that I did mean when I mentioned uh, when I mentioned my in my response that it, you know the. Um, that the vast majority of, uh, of gender studies theses can be start should be starting Dear Diary, uh, that that's autoethnography, not a, just ethnography. That I mean, ethnography is not much different than autoethnography, right? So the primary yeah, difference. That's where is, I was going with it. It's instead like, of Dear Diary, it's uh, your, you know, it's uh, let me start my blog post today with blah blah blah. Yep. Dear Tumblr. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Oh, man, man. The thing of ethnography is you kind of can't do it if you don't use triangulation to develop some kind of picture that's not just a moment in time. These social media studies often suffer from the same fatal flaws. Fair enough. I just, I don't know. In any case, I think that... Uh, I think the world's going to shit. My wife thinks the world's going to shit. Oh, well, so, uh, so you know. I, I just, I, I'm, I'm stunned, right? Like, and I don't, I, I have never been a prepper. Never been my thing. I always used to laugh at those people. But, like, I don't know. I don't, well, what I don't you don't do, it, what you don't do is what that Canadian did and bury 20 school buses and pretend it's going to be a bunker. Oh, speaking of which... Penn and Teller's bullshit is available on Hulu all the seasons. I am oh. so happy. I oh, man, I still have I have that downloaded somewhere. Oh man, like seriously. Oh, and so this is this is where I can tell you all pause garbage shit too. Well, this is where I can tell you that Steve is definitely not anti-vaccine because I guarantee you he loved the vaccine episode just oh, as absolutely. much as I did. Absolutely. It's just fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm really, I'm really money. not like I, I and, and, you know, I, I'm glad that we get to talk about it here. I'm not going to. Yeah, this is a safe in. space for having opinions. It, well, it's, it's not just that. Like, <laughs> it, it's good to face people who have a different opinion than mine. Right. Like, I'm a pretty yeah. dominant personality. Uh, you know, I kind of mow everybody down because, you, you know, know I, I also like to think of myself as somewhat humble. But at the same time, like, not just have oh. opinions, but like competent opinions right so so you know it's, it's nice to see that stuff and and i will say that you know my my opinions are are shifting on the vaccines i'm probably still not going to be taking it before the pandemic's over um i i am i am moving to a position where i'm much more comfortable with mrna vaccines uh as as a whole and i think the technology is amazing going forward but i'm not really okay with the government stepping in oh so by the way i have to take this or else they're going to take my rights away so so uh what this i think this is one of the, the items that i i had thrown into the um into the show ideas thing um so uh pfizer and i think moderna too um i think they're formally submitting uh the biological whatever the heck form oh yeah um, for the uh, for full for uh, 16 and up Yes, for uh, for full um, authorization. Yeah, not like emergency uh, so, use, but like actual. Right. I, I mean, it, it, power so just, just just not like just as a tangential note there, 
that yep. the the full authorization, the 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 full FDA approval is in the pipeline, and given especially given the the phase three data, and the the post EUA vaccination data, et cetera, um, it's likely that they're going to just like it's not going to be a rubber stamp, but like they've definitely got the data by now. Yep, and um, and, and from what I've seen, they they seem to be doing very very well. Yep. Again, there I, are people I, who have I reactions. I want to see longitudinal studies. I, I do not support sure. six months. I don't support even a year. I typically want to see more than that. And I like, so you know, if I had a kid, I would mind that there is, there's, there's, there, there's the, the mRNA vaccines that, that happened were a, a unique and fortunate consequence Absolutely. of 25 ish years. It's well, no, it's just, it's a con this is a coincidence. Um, uh, is this is a confluence of events, uh, 25 ish years of research into coronaviruses and RNA vaccine tech that was coming out of oncology, so a cancer research. Mm -hmm. And the six, the previous successes in both areas, so highlighting um, vaccine enhancement, uh, things like that. And then also, so being able to knock down the vaccine, the vaccine based enhancement of the immune response, while at the same time guaranteeing a better efficacy based on these mRNA vectors. And all of that, that they're able that to make is, that happen is pretty goddamn amazing. It, it is. So it it's really not, is. it wasn't, it, so you're absolutely right that it's like, it's on the order of like a year as well. Actually, by now it's, it's over a year since this stuff was first put in humans. So it's on the order of a year for the the uh, the studies for the specific vaccines that have been taken now, mm. but I would put that based on the previous data available and the relatively small changes that have been required to make the tech of, uh, applicable to this virus, we're taught in my estimation it's about as risky as getting the annual flu vaccine. A but and I well, totally well, agree. Vaccine, so I, that's a separate issue. I totally agree that. It's it's a reasonable thing to want to have more data and more assurances, mm -hmm. and well, that I mean, the state should not be holding your literal fucking way of life over you as a compliance measure. Yes, no, and absolutely that's absolutely ghastly. The, I well, I mean, the thing is that if you turn around, it, right, and this is this is the truth. If somebody comes to me and they say, "Hey, I've got this really cool product," right, and they can make a sales pitch to me. And it's a really cool product. There's a chance I might go buy it, right? But if you come to me and you say, buy my product or I'm going to beat you with a stick, I'm going to fuck your shit up, buddy. Like, that's what's going on. You're going to pay your taxes happen. because you're a fucking citizen. There is that. Let's be honest. <laughs> hmm. It's, uh, well, you know, it's pay your taxes or else. That's always been the case. Well, if they, they, people say it's the social contract, it's like, okay, but, um, you know, yeah, there's okay, so you say I, had, I have the right to vote. And, and, you know, have so, to say about that. So I will, I will say that while I don't support it, there's still an aspect of volunteerism to most taxes. And, and while I do not, I, the, the, I'm not really not a fan actually of Actually, you'll get an audit is the, is, the, is the underlying item at the end of that, and none of us are financial advisors. Yeah, the well, only way not paying taxes. <laughs> I can works see that is coming, and everybody doesn't pay taxes. And no, no, I mean you, 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 no, you can just you kind of are, not. You guys are completely off base with what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm just what I anything, actually, but no, please continue. The, the 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 truth of the matter is that that there, there are very few taxes that you technically have to pay. Right, you don't have to pay a property tax if you don't buy property. Right, you don't have to pay. Uh, you know, you don't have to pay a tax on your roads if you don't feel like driving a car. Those are those are all real things. We live in a complicated society, and we voluntarily choose to pay taxes because it is more convenient to pay taxes in the society and get what we want out of those taxes than to do something else. Now, the now, income you want to see who you want to see people who um, have completed that dream go down to Skid Row in L.A. Well, yeah, because uh, I mean, the people who are not paying taxes, you you can you can turn around and, and, and yeah. E if you wanna, if you wanna sit there and pack up your shit, and head to the middle of goddamn nowhere, and cut down a tree and build a log cabin, yes, there is a chance the government could sit there and 
fuck your shit up. But the likelihood that they are going to come find you is if you have if you have hiked yourself into the middle of goddamn nowhere, and you've built your log cabin and you're living off the land, the likelihood that they are going to come bother you for a beaver pelt is very very low. Right. That's that's the reality. Yeah, but you'd also have to be living in like the middle of fucking Montana or South Dakota. Sure, absolutely. Colo- you're like, not you're not like North Colorado. Be- this is not going to be the place where you set up in the middle of New York City. So anybody else it's who lives gonna in mostly the un- society, it's going to be shit unsettled land. Right. So so the the rest of society offers Ooh. you a much more convenient alternative for your existence and we pay for that. By the way, that reminds me of a fantastic case study in 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 woke excellence. Um of the of the kind of people who are happy to to burn Anne Frank's diary for for uh, heat, and uh, a wonderful display of of their uh, internal beliefs. So there's a black separatist uh, group called the uh, the Hammers or, oh, or black or whatever the hell they are. Yes, it was. Uh, oh God, it's I amazing. Thought it was a uh, some sort of comical thing. Nope, they are very much serious. They bought 200 acres of land in Colorado, uh, above at t- uh, 10,000 feet. Oh, um, I'm going to suffocate. So, so here's how. Oh, no, I actually have played paintball up in that elevation. It's a they're lot not fun. going to be able to grow anything. Is the main problem they're going to have. Oh no. No. And they're no, not going to be able to get any feet. By the way, and here's I'll the other thing. Find some for this, by the way. Here's the other thing. Worth while to see. They don't. They definitely didn't have the kind of money they need to buy the water rights, and they have three rivers and a lake on their land. Oh. That's gonna suck. So that's a guarantee. And you, so if you divert water, if you take water, if you fish, they didn't buy the water. To, if you try to drill a well, all of those things are illegal. They don't have the water. Like there's no way they ha- they barely had the money to make the 200 acre claim. Like to pay the to pay the 200 acres, they barely had the money for how that. Do you, how do you know they barely funny. had the money to do that? They said so. So they said specifically that they didn't have the money for the water rights. We just got enough money. We bought the 200 acres. So so if you bought the 200 acres, most It doesn't come the time, with the water rights. It doesn't? Oh, no. Oh, man, that's... Uh... Not if it's... Not if they... they all right, they bought 200 acres in Colorado at 10,000 feet. That's probably federal land or state land. No, there's plenty of stuff up there. If they, it doesn't, so the end result is they have 200 acres of land. Yeah. And they probably don't have the water rights, even if you suppose I, that they I, do have the water rights. I would assume that their if they goal bought is to the build land, a city. I would assume that if they bought the land and it is encompassing all the other stuff, it comes with the water rights. For the most part, for usually the most part, contract. Yeah. It's always contracted separately, but you, you probably write in, the like you yes, probably would offer yes it. Yes and least. no. Yes and no. Water rights in the United States is not typically contracted separately. You also don't typically own water rights that's that's very rare uh especially for surface water now groundwater can be a little bit a little bit funky that's and the it depends on the state yeah. but if they have rivers and lakes the typical ownership in u.s law is that the highest point that the water rises to and below is all considered united states uh territory so you can actually use it as a public resource uh, if you are tapping into the land, unless somebody else has laid claim specifically to the water rights, it typically comes with the property. So I, am sure, I would be willing to bet you they have the water rights, and it's not like – because it's not typically sold separately. Now, you start talking about the Midwest, the Midwest, and I'm not talking Colorado, but the Midwest where you have all of these farmlands. I think it was T. Boone Pickens at one time was buying up water rights separately and so farmers were running into a situation where they were technically having to pay someone else for the water that they used but so, at, that was end, that was a while ago end result of this is that they want to build a city this is basically a this is then they're calling this a land reclamation they're they're decolonizing a land by buying it. Yeah, they have liberated two hundred acres. No, no, just I want you to appreciate this. They're liberating native land. They're decolonizing it by purchasing it. Yeah, hmm. capitalism works. 
or something. I mean, power to them. So, like. so just, these are the people who are pissed off about the Louisiana purchase, who are purchasing a land pack. I mean, power to them. You know what? If and none of them. So the here's the thing: they, they claim to have like the the majority of them are native somehow. What they had not made a claim as to if any of them are native to the tribes that originally owned the land, if there was original ownership in the first place. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I would say well, that's, that's something they're probably not going to say because they're idiots. Well, they're, they're going to make they're going to make a 200 acre chaz in the mountains, and it's they have like no. a, at, at most they'll get four months of growing season. No, and nothing's no, going to fucking it, grow there. They'll they'll do okay. They're they'll at do ten thousand okay. feet. They're at ten thousand feet. Yeah, I know, I know. Their no, their crops are going to be arid. Some excellent uh, on, on this arid headline, shitty land. Their headline is so good. Jonestown 2.0 racism edition. I mean, I I don't know. I don't know. I I having having lived up the... there and played up there, ten thousand feet. You are correct that there is less stuff that grows up there, but it does tend to grow up there. No, uh, the land that they have, have though is shit. I'm just I'm telling you, the land is terrible. Oh yeah. Where no, did they buy? The land, uh, they they pretty much okay. got a clear. I've been getting place. like I've been getting fucking mentions from this thread for for probably a uh, almost a week now. Uh, there was uh, someone had mentioned like, why don't we make you know it shouldn't like you know the the your mama so would, fat would jokes. It should link... be. Link it, one of these these things so I can. Take I'll, a look I'll link at some point here, but like just it should, instead of like your mama's so fat, uh, we should make your soil so poor. So I just belted out a bunch of jokes from that, and uh, I've been getting fucking mentions for like for days now. Just go find one from. So what's the group the, called again? Black like Hammer. the Black Hammers area. Black Hammer, uh, singular. Something. Hammer. Okay, so Black Hammer. Oh, actually, I just found a, a decent soil. article on that. I'll just put it in the show links. Okay. From RT, it was the one the uh, yes, yeah, uh, there it is. Hilarious. The whole thing's hilarious. It's all just so they problem. have a statement of unity. Okay, so here is the thread. Huh. That is from, so that'll show you the pictures of the land, and uh, one second. Uh, yeah, copy. Cool. Article, this. Think, so I'll make sure and include that for everybody. Hammer this City. Thread, so this is down that thread a little bit, but this is the top of the Oh my god, they're so gonna build jokes. I'm looking at Build Hammer City, and they are literally gonna put up a whole bunch of mud huts. That is <laughs> god. Oh, so they're talking about rich soil. They they're calling that rich soil. Um, rich man's so, soil, I guess. Well, if you if you go ahead and click on that last link I posted, that is the top of of me and a couple other people. Just this guy. He's so I, I know I know like our Twitter acquainted and and uh I've, like for a while uh we've done some played some shit on Steam and so on. But like Freak Occurrence started this a little bit, and I just went ahead and took it and ran. Um, with a fuck ton of uh, jokes. Holistic uh, healthcare, excellent. And they're going to use renewable energy. This is going to be a great place. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, very progressive. Absolutely. I'm I'm looking forward to when this goes back on sale. Well, I mean, you might be able to get a fire sale price on it, although. Oh, that is. Huh. So that's their land, huh? Yeah, look at that uh, beautiful dirt. It's just asking to be... Uh... Uh, let's see. I'm trying to... I didn't want to open up Twitter. Oh, okay, so like here you can, um, you can see my jokes with that. I'll make sure and link that for everybody. The uh, freak occurrence tweet as well. Uh, it looks like it looks like Twitter doesn't want to open for me, so. So you know things like your soil so poor, <laughs> your soil so poor it can't even grow concern. Your soil so poor the only thing it grows is dead. Soil so poor the weeds avoid it. Soil so poor you fertilize it with EBT. We have one. Etc. 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 Rivers. Your soil so poor <laughs> the ants build nests on layaway. 
I mean, even taking this, that they do have all the rights they would need to actually do this thing, I don't really see this going anywhere. And so also yeah, pour okay. your whole weddings on it just yeah. for the rice? Uh... It's rough. And so also pour your welfare check from the stable to sod? Uh, it'll be interesting. It will, it's... it will certainly be interesting. I, I, I mean, I'm that, that looks like... Expanded chess, basically. A bunch of innocent people will probably get killed, or... Part well, of I mean, it... it, it in the mountains, right? So, <laughs> so, so, again, their soil, right? If they, if they turn around and they spend the money and they, they actually fertilize, I think that they probably could grow something. They're not gonna get a full two growing seasons out. So basically, they're gonna have to wait until June. They're gonna get, they're gonna have to grow short cycle plants, 30, 30 to ninety day plants at most. My guess is that you're probably looking at opening this up. That they, they won't be able to till the land until probably June, and that means that their harvest is gonna be September. Uh, well, so also for the plant roots, spell it I O U. Now they could, they could also feasibly do something like a hydroponics or a fog ponics system if they wanted to do that. Now, I don't think so, given the fact that they happen to be, you know... The soil so it's poor when it cut now that it went by a little growth. I'm sure that I'm sure that if they wanted to, they could make it happen, but looking at looking at what they have here, they're kind of nuts. The soil so poor, I need to put a dollar next to the fish heads. Yeah, so the yeah, so it's it's Black Hammer, not uh, so their their thing is gonna be called Hammer City. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Wait a second. A, um, I wonder if they'll come across any infringement issues with the King of the Hammers because they do have a thing called Hammer City. I wonder if they've got that copyrighted. That would be hilarious. I uh. Power to them. You know what? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, the great thing about capitalism is if you want to run your little socialist utopia, you can buy it. You can do that, <laughs> right? Indeed. Indeed. The thing money, is, the money thing can is, buy you unhappiness. That your socialist utopia, every single socialist utopia that has tried in the United States, and there have been many, has failed miserably and horribly. No, Predominantly no because there's a work. whole lot of people who don't want to actually work. You don't say. Yeah, it's, uh, yep. Well, that kind of ties back to an earlier topic we were discussing. Yeah. I mean, you know what? So uh, I'll, I will. Know. I will fully admit it. If you, if they had done their, their the six hundred dollars back in March, and they turned around and they'd furloughed my, uh, my wife and I, we would have been making a hundred thousand dollars equivalent income during that period of time. I would have said, "Screw it, let's go do the the Appalachian Trail." Right. I, I would have been yep. fine with that. Like. I can't blame uh, the people who are uh, on unemployment for choosing to enjoy their life and do that. That being said, I can absolutely blame the political leaders who were idiots and decided to enable that as an option. Oh, uh, oh yeah. certainly. I mean, they uh, they absolutely screwed us every time. Oh, that's that's uh, world minus China. I actually need to give you the U.S. data. Click. There it is. Yeah. So the. Uh, that rise that everyone was talking about and freaking out about, um, thankfully, didn't happen. What rise? Well, there was going to be a fourth Mount Stupid, um, and right now it looks like it was just a little bit of a foothill, and then it died off. There was that new wave coming in. Everyone was talking about a new wave uh, a couple weeks ago. Now are we talking I, about I mean, look, strings? look. Because I don't know if I'm actually familiar with it. Here's, with here's the bottom line. Here's the bottom line. Half the country is vaccinated. Of the other half of the country, two thirds of it has already had the actual disease. So we're probably at eighty to ninety percent immunity. Yeah, we are probably approaching herd immunity uh, right? numbers. The reality no, no 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 we're not there yes, yet. Yes, yes, yes. Herd immunity no, doesn't mean nobody gets it. Herd I'm, immunity and, and, and means we, that it doesn't wipe out our hospitals. You will look, still get you will still get COVID and you can still get COVID even with herd immunity. Herd immunity just means it doesn't really spread very far or very fast. Yeah, it's 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 a fuzzy concept. 
Not really. I mean, it's it's uh, pretty much yeah, it's it pretty is much really. Thing. You can assign an arb you can sign an arbit you can assign the arbitrary threshold to seventy percent if you want. At, at the end but of the it day, it's still a fuzzy at the boundary. End of the day, right? Like it's not going to take off or have a rampant spread. You're not going to be wiping out societal resources. There'll be a couple cases here or there. That's what herd immunity is. At the end of the day, we were probably there sometime last year. No. Yes. Uh, Herd immunity? No. I'm I'm sorry. When we start talking about New York, they did serum testing. If and, you want to talk uh, about a local herd immunity, maybe. Uh, maybe that's true. I don't really New give York, a shit about your mountain city? folk. Yeah, maybe. Actually. Well, that's because you're up there in, in God's anus. Oh, no. I live in a beautiful area. We're just hoping that, you know, we're just hoping that some point. Okay, uh, you're at the edge of the starfish. Fine. We're just, we're just hoping that, you know, sometimes... All the people around us actually get smart and blow the bridges to the city. And then New York would be a great place. You know, what they should do is just uh, hire Cersei Lannister to take over the island, and then uh, I think she could put that green shit underneath all the bridges. Then just What's kill one of her kids. Who's this? The the angry asshole from, uh, well, actually, that, that's kind of all of them. The evil queen from Game of Thrones. That's still oh. narrowed down. Oh, yeah, um, no, I uh, I don't. Never watched I never watched Game of Thrones. Oh, uh, you guys suck! It's a great series. No, it's no, it's media. not. It's made the first half of it is. People. No, no, I I watched the first few episodes. I mean, I'm never and gonna play you watched the first few episodes and then there's gave like, up on it because there's you're a like bitch. thirty different characters and they all look like Boromir. So I there's there's let let me rephrase that. There's Boromir and his variants and a midget. And that's the entire cast of Game of Thrones. I don't know. I mean, I got soured on Witcher by the other guys. Come on, they even got the guy How from the second How did you get soured Silent. on Witcher? Witcher's amazing. They even got the guy from the second Silent Hill movie, all right? I don't even know what that is. Kit Harrington. I don't know what Silent Hill is. Okay, so you suck. I mean, I know what Silent Hill is. I don't know the movies. Why have you not watched the movies? They're amazing. Because movies are horrible and they're made by Hollywood. Yeah, but these aren't made I, like the last year. I don't year watch made movies well that. because I have oh, other yeah, things to do with my time. Media. You know, I, I, I have spent most of the last movies. 20 years actually trying to work or working. And uh, the rest of the time is spent attempting to keep up with all of my science -y stuff. So I, I have limited time for me. Yeah, and but you should also have multiple monitors because otherwise you're a pleb. I do have multiple monitors, mm -hmm. but uh, well, I the thing is you don't have enough to put a movie on one. I just don't have the time to really watch it. The one upstairs. Is that the one? I'm hearing that you don't have enough uh, monitors to put a movie on one of them. Uh, no, I do. I just don't actually feel like putting a movie on it because it's. I'm gonna yeah, have to get I sucked really into it. Movies. So. I, I don't I, I really struggle with getting sucked into a storyline that takes an hour and a half to three hours to complete. I really do. Like a sitting you mean still like one of your long. jokes. Oh snap. So, no, it's actually more like you reading the friggin' Pfizer document. I just can't take it. That lasted all of thirty minutes, maybe. It lasted too long, Craig. It lasted too long. Well, well I mean, clearly it scarred you. So it's it did. It did. I read. I read I, we went over three pages. But still, yeah, I mean, it wasn't that bad. Jesus, man, come on. It was bad. Three pages. It was, bad. It was three. really bad. It was terrible. You're sitting I, there. I, you're, I, you're, I, you're a, you're a fucking regulatory, com, you're a was, regulatory compliance, you're compliance guy, and you're bitching about three pages. All right, you know, how, you know how appreciate really that. good regulatory compliance guys operate? It's very simple. And what, if they read the table of contents? Nope. I just sit there and say what's going to happen, and when somebody contradicts me, I go through and I flip randomly through pages, just like an English major does, and I pull out whatever the fuck it is that I want that defends, defends my point of view. It works out pretty well. well I suppose. And as long as you have the bigger cojones, you usually win. Unless you happen to be dealing with IH, in which case you lose. You had mentioned that before. Until I go on vacation. Yeah, no, we, we actually managed to come through the IH hold, and then two days went by, and the same guy who had the previous IH hold, like, did something that initiated another IH hold, so... What a cunt. 
he got asked a question. And then he put a pause on everything. And then we're supposed to be coming out of it again. And mm-hmm. they kind of decided that maybe they shouldn't. But it's it's like uh, trying to go through the CFRs. And it, the problem the problem that you have is that the CFRs have... So, so the CFRs are the CFRs are the CFRs. But there's also an entire encyclopedic volume of clarifications, statements, uh, letters, and various other things between OSHA yeah. and whoever and in that that litany of of literary uh text uh we aren't looking at that or at least... is when you have to go through the translation from the federal to the state level because state states have their own sets of laws and all this shit uh you know and, what and, it, and they contradict each other that only applies when you actually ha- are subject to state rules yeah like say if you're working at a state university yep that sucks for you yeah, I did. Yeah, understandably so. Twice. Two different state universities. Same shit. You know, I. What I are you did doing? I'm trying to fix something. Have you done anything to, like, say how you're fixing that? No. I should probably fill out endless paperwork. Yeah, it's unfortunate. And that is why China will win. Oh, well, speaking of China. On uh, some updates, I'll put a link to this, but Michael Tracy's been following along, and there's... Uh, oh, the lab leak hypothesis. Indeed, indeed. It keeps gaining momentum as the days what a... go by. Oh, you mean like people aren't just saying it's this big conspiracy, blah, blah, blah. There's actually merit to it. Yeah, or, or, you know, why would it, why would anybody possibly think that the mainstream media and the CDC and the WHO might possibly be lying... I mean, they only told us that there was no way that it was a lab leak hypothesis, and that was just conspiracy theories. Not not that the official sources have ever been wrong on anything associated with COVID or that they obfuscate their data. No, we have to be wrong because some ethnographist, you know, masturbated on Facebook. Yeah, it's a, uh, what would you say? It's a shit I mean, you're not wrong. I, yeah. yeah, I know. I'm never wrong. The unique trait of being me. I have to, I have to wonder though, like, I mean, they spell out a methodology and shit that I'm just I'm not reading at this point. Um, for who? Well, let's see. They have a case study. They have visuals. Like, I still have the paper open. I I uh, I closed that and immediately my mood improved. Oh, it says Twitter data and quantitative analysis. Oh, you're still dealing with that awful shit. Yes, he is. I'm not, I'm not actually like reading it though. Like I just stop, man. I, That's bad for your mind. The moment I said I still have it open, the moment I said I still have it open was the moment I opened the tab up. Like, yeah, but it's it's gonna like infect your computer with mental retardation. So let's see, Chris. I'm just gonna name the authors real quick because uh, these people deserve to have their name tarnished by this shit. Oh well, fair. Uh, Crystal Lee, Tanya Yang, uh, Gabrielle Inchoko. Uh, Graham Jones and Arvind uh, Satinarayan. Shame on all five of you. So okay, so four of the five are from MIT. Four of the five are from MIT. One of them is from Wellesley. All of them in um, Massachusetts. And they should all be terribly ashamed. Yep. All five of you guys. All five of you like this. I hope I hope this becomes the punchline at the beginning of every single talk you try to give. You know, so uh, is this going to be another ethnography talk, or are you going to actually present some data? Yeah, because, I mean, there might have been a time when ethnography wasn't total bullshit, but, I mean, now... Well, it's no. just, is it, there's it's, never been a time where ethnography was not total bullshit. So... That's probably true. That's probably the true. The e- ethnography in certain fields is fine. No. You're but wrong. But the usage of it in a paper is 99.999999%. No, Craig, you're wrong. Of the time. There is 0%. The kind of red flag that makes you go immediately to the conclusion section and see if they said anything of worth or just throw it away. Nope. Nope. You're wrong, and I'm, Craig. And I'm extremely the answer is charitable. 
the time that ethnography is useful is zero percent. And I'm extremely charitable about these things. I I uh, I I am too. A zero percent. No, you're not charitable. Absolutely. Yeah, Percents can go negative terrible. when it comes to, to at least you know point zero zero one percent or you know nope. in the vicinity nope, is, of the uh, this is, of the coronavirus. I I will uh, I'm being charitable. If coronavirus and ethnography are involved, then there is a zero percent probability. I I I believe that there is a this is a zero percent chance because if I was not being, you know, generous and charitable with my arguments, I would simply believe that the answer would involve I. Okay. You piqued my curiosity. Go on. Oh, the square root there's of a negative. robot. No. Fuck you, I'm making the joke. I all I'm saying is that that uh, if I was to be non charitable, it would the probability wouldn't even exist because it would be the square root of a negative number. I see. Which isn't a thing. Ah, uh, yes, non-real imaginary. Hey, why not at that point make it a fucking Sedemion? So, so, so the less you have two imaginary numbers involved is that uh, anything that Ignagri can do is imaginary. Wait, it well, is. I mean, kind of by its very nature, at some level, it's all made up. That's exactly right, which is why it's always zero. In the world of science, where it is objective reality... Not even, like, the they... least bit curious as to how they've embarrassed themselves? Nope. Nope. I don't need to. See, I, I get to save time in my research and reading of papers by not reading anything that has ethnography in the title, and I, it automatically saves the me. The reason I read this is because it was from fucking MIT, all right? You would kind That's, of expect better from there, but... I did. No, no. The, the most recent studies that actually sit there and evaluate, like... Uh, researchers and institutions, name recognition does not improve the quality of papers. I it, would expect it makes at least... them more likely to get published, but it does not improve the quality of the so I was not That's not the thing. MIT as an institution just has a good reputation, and it earned that reputation on its merit. Oh, but so, it largely on its merit. So I have a certain set of expectations for them. And so when I see something like this, and... I say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at it. And then I see the word, I see the fucking word of ethnography in the abstract. I I mean, you, you know, I basically read papers. I abstract conclusions, find out what they say, and then go back and see if the data supports it. Then read the whole thing over again. Mm. Like, I then, you know, top to bottom. But, like, if I want to know what yeah, happened, what that? that's what I do. I just abstract, what's the gist, conclusions, what did you find? Okay, they said what they found. Does the data show it? And then start over from the top and go straight through. That way I have myself kind of oriented in the right direction. And just, I didn't have to go past conclusions in that algorithm because, as we mentioned, uh, it's complete fucking garbage. I would recommend for a layperson listening to not do what Steve uh, has, has done. Largely because that is born out of experience, having read these things before. I would recommend if you don't, haven't read a paper like this, to at least read the abstract and the conclusions. Nope. Nope, I'm pretty good with it says ethnography. Yeah, it's I wasn't talking right. about you, damn it. Yeah, not you. You already know that it's all stupid bullshit. We're yes, like I do. As I said, it's... it's bullshit. It's born out of experience having read these. I know you've but, read enough of these to know that but now. But if we don't if we don't create a culture wherein it automatically goes in the trash can, then some idiot somewhere you will think know that to do that. Study but, technique. You're just saying you're just saying trust me. Trust me, bro. Yeah, trust no, I'm not. science, man. I'm not I'm not at all saying anything about trusting me. You don't have to trust me. This is you why just, I'm saying they should like, read it for themselves and then like know. It, it, it should just be we should just, we should just go in and make a dictionary definition definition that says ethnography. The science of made up bullshit. Read. Okay, ethnography. Dear Tumblr. Dear Live Journal. Dear MySpace. Oh, I mean, so I'm reading, I'm reading through this you know, lab leak yeah. hypothesis, and it just looks like Michael Tracy is really digging into the, um, you know, how the hell is it that all these people sat there and said that this was debunked or this was was whatever. It's very, it's interesting, but we all kind of knew all this stuff where they, you know, the the 
various new news organizations were were calling it debunked without it actually being debunked. The one oh, thing I right, never right, understood it's kind of like the hydroxychloroquine thing. The the one thing I really don't understand about about this is why the news media was insisting that it had to be debunked. Well, I don't remember what triggered it. And you know the orange man it, he Yeah, said, so, and maybe that's know, what it was. It was just anti-Trump bull crap. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's why so much that has happened happened. I mean, you've got 59 million people at your back. That's that's an army. I guess I mean, the question that we uh, I I wonder I wonder how many Biden voters are regretting their vote. That's the real. So question. many. I Biden L's is our are best not account. 59 million people that would vote for Joe Biden today. Without if you uh, if you for that number. if you go on a Twitter. At Biden L's. Mm, yes. I've Follow I've seen Biden it. I've L's. seen it. What was what oh, was Oh man, I love that account right now. What were you saying, Evan? I couldn't hear you. Uh, aside from that Biden L's is excellent. Yeah, yeah, no, you you were citing a number. Oh, oh, uh, just as a random thought, you know, fifty nine million. You know, would probably ah, there would probably be less than fifty nine million. Just as a random off the top of my head number with absolutely no correlation to any kind of voting numbers or anything like that. Got it. I thought because you were citing it. So uh yeah, just this completely random number of fifty nine million. But uh yeah, I would say that there are less than that number now. Mm. All we can do there is are many twenty twenty two. Yeah, I, there are many, 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 many people that are that are just like you, like they're the 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 minimum that a lot of these people are upset about is the the gas pump. You know, they're sitting there, they're they're uh, buying a hundred dollars worth of gas for their shitty little car. Well, oh, that's that's gonna get. Uh, I yeah, the, the it's, in, it's not getting any better anytime soon. No, the inflation no. is gonna be. Inflation yeah. is already astounding. It it, it pains me yeah. every time I have to go work on my bathroom and buy just a piece of board. Yeah, it's, so it's kind of breathtaking which, how very that's gonna hit, hit this entire decade. Is that's gonna be happening entire you know, fucking you know decade? What, that's what's, just from last year. What's stunning to me, and we talked about this, I think the last time I was on, is that I think that these kinds of spike in prices for wood is a huge risk to the entire lumber industry. Yeah. Uh, because at the end of the day, plastic prices aren't going up as much, and that's because we can produce plastic internally. And you know, something like PLA, uh, a lot of thermoplastics, at least PLA has you very PLA very similar. Me- right, and and PLA has very similar uh, mechanical and thermal properties as wood. So oh, when you yeah. actually, it, it's it's not exactly the same, Just but enough, like. Though. We could we could absolutely get to a point where we were uh, extruding. We all all you did was show up with a, a truck, a dump truck full of PLA pallets well, instead of having to ship lumber, and you could build a house of any size with me, um, a minor three D printer frame. Let me let me go ahead and and uh, put that panfish down for you. Um, PLA biodegrades a lot faster than wood. Yeah, it's not super great outside. Sure. But you also build a house specifically if so that mechanically and, and thermally, you're right. But environmentally, it's right. Yeah. You're not building a whole house out of PLA. I know you're just you, framing you, it, right? Yeah, you'd put the framing up, and then you'd sit there and you put your uh, siding on. It does very poorly in environment outside of like lab conditions. I mean, it would be oh so, ABS though. Yeah, I actually did look some or... stuff for doing uh, outside artwork as a matter of fact well but again i i i understand what you guys are saying but it would be internal to the structure yeah i know but you're you're missing how much the environment penetrates into the sides of a house now that said if you built the house with that in mind which is entirely doable right i mean you could put a coating on it it, you know it wouldn't be that hard to extrude and then put a water membrane over it. Yeah, no, I mean, you right? could like if, if you were like, and then you know, if you coat them with uh, whatever, I don't know. It's right. not something I've done. But like either, to know offhand. either way, so so if you turned around and did this, all you'd have to do is have an extruder head that is printing I-beams for you in your house, 
and you could print all your stuff right there, whether it's PLA or ABS. I, I was only saying PLA because I'd actually looked at those properties. I'm not like super heavily tied into it. I, I don't think it I just don't think it's a very good argument to say, oh my god, it degrades in the environment. I yeah, sure it does. But you're not in the environment on the interior of a house, at least if it's a properly constructed the house. The exterior the exterior of a house allows the environment. so the environment does not penetrate past the interior wall of a house, typically. But say in the attic, you're going to have a lot more humidity and heat than you are inside the house. If you're in the walls of the house, but, then often you're going to have seepage from below into the bottom of the walls. That's just, it's just a, the way they work. Not, not with modern construction techniques. Modern actually, construction yeah, techniques modern are actually pretty good. Is a, a modern built house, even a modern built pole barn using the most current techniques is pretty well uh, you're, you're, you guys are missing things like concrete is porous. Well, no, nope. that's going to depend on your nope, concrete. No, not at all. I mean, including including concrete is porous. When you start talking about modern house construction, like I've got a I've got a buddy of mine who who just had a recently built house. I got somebody else who I know that's doing it. When you start talking about these houses, they are so envir so well sealed environmentally that they actually have to put in engineering systems to allow the environment in because otherwise like your air quality degrades very quickly so they actually have breathers in them they have recirculators to pull in outside air because they're pretty much airtight uh, i mean obviously it's not perfectly airtight but it's pretty close to that and then they use concrete uh they use concrete compositions uh and concrete pouring techniques and while yes concrete is porous uh they'll also sit there and they'll do pour the concrete and then they'll seal the concrete and if you seal the concrete, you can actually create a water barrier uh, through the, the interior. The entire slab. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's like a paint thing. You just put it on the surface of the concrete, and it's sealed. Uh, like my basement. Or putting, my or basement putting the walls is, up. My basement is field stone and water, and it leaks like a sieve. I have a sump pump that is going all the time. My, the walls of my house are ancient. Like I'm literally like the, the. I just sat there and took a look at one of the the uh, the the frames for my house and it is a hand hewn born where they left the bark on the tree right yes that house is exposed to humidity and moisture but you go to you go to you know my friend's house there and his basement has an interior coating for his cement walls and Actually, nothing comes through i may as well just make it out of polypropylene then why is that because we have shale gas well, I mean, you, you can use what you can you can cheap. use whatever you want to make whatever plastic you want. The point is that if the, if the construction materials that we have today are radically different than what we had historically, for two reasons: one, labor costs changed, and two, material costs changed. The reason that we have drywall is that it cost it takes less labor to install than plaster. Right. The reason that we have uh, the reason that we're switching over to uh, like I just switched my whole house over to PEX, which is amazing, by the way. It takes me 20 minutes to do a connection uh, and I can run an entirely straight line of pipe. And that is that's an amazing material. And it costs me a fraction of what copper pipe does. You start talking about wood uh, hitting the prices that it's hitting right now and competitors become economically viable to an industry that has never really had any real competitors. I mean, we could actually see some really, really fascinating innovation come out of this uh, kind of shitty hellhole we've found ourselves yep. in. Well, and that's that's the, the one bright side. I, I mean, the, the question mm. that we have to, the, the question that we have to ask is uh, what, what level of social instability is gonna be introduced overall? So what's the final outcome? I'm kind of thinking that the United States it, I don't think we're gonna. I don't know if we'll go full civil war because I think a whole bunch of people will pull their ripcord before that. Um, That's possible. It, well, we but I, I could easily. But yeah, it might not get to that level. I mean, there's there's going to be violence. That's true, but I could see it being more of a like the coasts get their thing. The coasts become one thing, and then so so like Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida would probably be the kickers to to start off the whole entire trend and a whole bunch of the lower states and uh westward would switch to to just be kind of a confederacy 
the Pacific coast would be the Pacific coast and the Atlantic coast would be the Atlantic coast. And I don't like, well, we might all have a mutual defense pact between the three, but between us, I could see that, that being how the split goes. Gentlemen. Good question. Um, it's that time, eh? It is that time. Understood, sir. Understood. Well, it's been a pleasure having you. It is and, indeed. Um, have a nice evening. All right. See you guys later. Later, man. See ya. And I've actually got a little bit of good news, too, that uh, we can just throw in here to wrap for the night as well. Sweet. So let me bring that up. But uh, one of the really good bits of news, I've already shared it in here from Boris Johnson. Uh, breaking, well, not breaking, this is actually uh, earlier today, but Boris Johnson has said that there's a chance, uh, there's a chance now that it's going to be okay to hug members of your own household in six days. So, you know, really, you know, bravo. I'm so happy for you Brits that that's going to be so nice to be able to hug people that are in your own home because the government said you can. I, I imagine that uh, if we're lucky, if we're lucky, you won't actually have to pay for a license for that, and you'll just be able to do it. That'd be really hey, great, but, you know, he, I, I wouldn't hold my uh, my breath. Androlf Cuomo has been trying to say stupid shit like that here. And you know what? At least up in upstate New York, we're not tolerating him. You know, speaking like, of, uh, speaking of uh, Herr Cuomo, you know, you don't hear a lot about Me Too anymore these days. Yeah, it's amazing how that happens. Not getting a lot of airplay, all the Me Too stories we were hearing so much about. Well, I mean, that's that's, that's the Dems. They they get a tool, they use it to beat their enemy, and then they retire it because it eventually always bites them in the ass. Yeah, it's funny how they never use pedophilia on their enemies. Isn't that weird? No, that's, that's probably just a coincidence. What am I thinking? I don't know anything. I'm just some random cat on the internet. So that's one bit of good news. So, uh, you know, kudos to you, Brit Bongs. Uh, you must be very, very happy about that. And I've got something else that I uh, had on my own timeline. Let me uh, let me pull that up here. Oh, and uh, the Blasio, uh, some good news for New Yorkers, uh, unless you uh, unless you're an ACAB kind of type, kind of type. Uh, they're getting 105 million dollars in extra funding. So. You know, it is uh, it is what it is. You know, that's uh, one of those things that happened. Is that the uh, they they shrank the budget by a billion dollars? Now they're going to add a hundred million every no. so often to bring it right back to where it was. No, they actually never did. Uh, the only place that really went through was in some places. I think in California and in Minneapolis, yeah. maybe Atlanta. So I'm not I thought I thought they were trimming trimming like a billion from the budget for the NYPD. I I think that went. I don't know if that actually went through. I know that that had been proposed, but I kind of think that it hadn't actually pro, uh, been like voted in. But I've got some. Um, I don't know. Uh, either this is good news or distressing news, depending on how you look. But the Queen of England is uh, apparently tomorrow going to say that you have to have a photo ID if you're going to be voting in general elections. So either that's good or that's very bad. I don't know. We'll have to find out. Maybe um, yeah, maybe uh, maybe because it's European and bold, forward thinking, they'll uh, you know, maybe they'll think that that's a wise thing, and maybe they'll think that maybe we should do that here. But you know, I'm I'm obviously holding my breath until I uh, choke if that's the case. Yeah. Oh no, I can't share the KFC tweet. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Well, I'll give a quick description of uh, the thing. Don't know if uh, you or anyone who will be listening to this later is familiar with the slang term, but you have, have you ever heard a black person refer to another black person as crispy? No. Okay, well, it's pretty derogatory. About as derogatory as it can be in that community it's basically um to be to be entirely fair i do not tend to know many racial epithets uh, i not, usually have to really have them explained epithet. to me it's kind of an inside baseball kind of thing it's like you'd have to be a black person or hang out with a lot of black people to really know this one because it's like uh, 
It's like an Asian word for Asians, so you really wouldn't know it. Mm. But that being said, the uh, the Colonel Sanders thing had a uh, white woman with a black child in a very large uh, Colonel Sanders bucket, and it said you had a, something along the lines of you had an order of extra crispy, and if you know the lingo, it's uh, it's incredibly derogatory, which is just genuinely hilarious. Hmm. Oh, and an update on uh, what happened. There was a shooting in uh, New York, uh, New York Times on Saturday. Unfortunately, it's going to be memory hold as the individual that did the shooting has been identified as uh, Farrakhan Muhammad. So, ah. rest in peace, young ladies. You will be forgotten, and I am sorry, so... I guess that's all the good news I've got, but, I mean, uh, you know, he, he's been identified, so, hey, that's that's something, right? Maybe they'll find him, and then we won't really hear anything else about it, because, much like so many of the shooters lately, they have been inconveniently hewn, shall we say. Hewn or hewed? I don't know. Uh, hewed, hewed would be to cut from a piece of lumber. Or would that be uh, hewn? Uh, I think I'm getting really. I you know what you might be right. Here, you might so, be right. It's yeah. late. Hewed it's late. Hewed. It's late. Whatever. It's been. Uh, it's been an interesting week and slightly less uh, tiresome to the soul than uh, some of the prior weeks, but certainly tiresome as they go. And uh, I don't know. Unless, uh, unless roll, you use roll. a lot of gasoline, in which case it's been quite tiresome to the soul. And you're gonna be um, you're gonna be looking for it a lot for at least a week because um, apparently they did not pay the ransom, and unless the feds are coming in to pay the ransom, not much is gonna change. But that being uh, said, you know what? Paying the ransom is generally always the wrong thing to do. We have uh, we have a few days left before that's gonna be a major problem. Uh, realistically. Well, we are seeing these stations run out. I mean, it's Have starting we? to happen. Yeah, it's basically oh, begun tonight. Oh, really? Yeah. Because you know, I, mean, I it, filled it's up... probably, too, a combination, much like the uh, toilet paper issue. Like, people are saying, oh, God, we're going to run out. we got to fill up. So they've kind of exacerbated yeah. the issue, undoubtedly. Yeah, because I filled up this like... morning completely unaware of this crisis, and, like, my gas prices were normal, and... Yeah, same here. But then I'm not. With I mean, outside time. of the what forty to sixty cent Biden hike, at a minimum. But yeah, Biden's America. Yep. There we go. So I've pretty much covered everything that I wanted to get into tonight. Was there anything that you were wanting to go over yourself? Nope, I'm good for the night, man. Cool. It's bedtime. All right. Well, you sleep tight, and everybody. Uh, been a pleasure having you. Talk to you all again real soon, and uh, you know, keep your powder dry, stay safe, stay sane in this crazy mixed-up world, and see you again soon.